Well, ladies and gentlemen, it was never meant to be this way. This is not how things were supposed to have turned out. The United Nations started on a high. Born out of the horrors of the war, based upon the idealistic drafting of the British and the Americans during that war, trying to respond to the problems of the League of Nations, the United Nations came to us in 1945 with the spirit and the letter of universalism. For the first time, universal human rights were proclaimed for all, not just graded hierarchically, depending on whether you were in Europe or elsewhere. And for the first time, as many member states as there were existing independent states were ensconced in one international organization. With a f within a few years, we had the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, still an iconic document. We had the Convention on Genocide, still an operative document. We had work begun on an in international convention on human rights, which took 20 years, but the work started. The values of the UN were all embracive, comprehensive, universalist. Let me just read a couple of sections from the Charter to you to illustrate this. Firstly, from the preamble. To reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person, in the equal rights of men and women, and of nations large and small. And from the operative provisions of the Charter, to develop friendly relations among nations based on respect for the principle of equal rights and self-determination of peoples, etc., etc. So there you are. The stall was laid out. That was the promise. Together with those instruments came the structures. The Commission on Human Rights was set up with a subcommission. And from that organ came tumbling a range of important and still relevant human rights mechanisms. Now that promise what became of it? Has it been fulfilled? To what extent has it failed? And if it is flawed, what do we do about it? Do we jettison the whole enterprise? Do we jettison the idealism of 1945 and go back to the rough and tumble of power politics? The principles of the UN, the promise of the UN, was to bring human rights to individuals on the basis of the self-determination and, uh, and the equality of nations. But what are we saying here? And how does that fit in with the theme of this conference? What we are not saying, what I am not saying, and what I hope you are not saying, is that because human rights overseeing mechanisms have become flawed, Therefore, the whole essence of international human rights is to be jettisoned. What I hope we're not saying is that focus upon one state in a disproportionate and uneven-handed manner means forgetting the whole enterprise, throwing the lot out. I hope you're not saying that. I certainly wouldn't dream of saying that because I don't believe it. What became of that reality with regard to the Commission on, uh, on Human Rights? First of all, let's get clear one thing. The Commission on Human Rights was a political body. Those who criticized it for politicization are playing a rather uh, ambiguous game. Because the Commission was composed of state representatives, it could never be anything but political. The question was how to fit in the expert 
independent mechanisms within a structure, a, what you might term a parliamentary structure composed of representatives of the states. The reality is mixed. It's not all good, that's obvious and patent, but it's not all bad. We have seen through the Commission a range of international human rights instruments being accepted and you can see some of them listed on one of the boards outside. We have seen through the Commission on Human Rights a range of monitoring structures uh, being established. Thematic monitoring uh, mechanisms to look at phenomena such as torture, religious intolerance, uh, arbitrary execution and so on and so forth. Country specific uh, mechanisms as well as your general political debate and a rudimentary attempt to establish an individual petition procedure. It was not all bad. But the reality showed us that while politicization is inevitable in any kind of parliamentary body, excessive politicization, meaning a disproportionate and unfair focus to the detriment of other situations, corrodes the institution to such an extent that the UN Secretary General himself referred to the work of the uh, Commission on Human Rights as excessively politicized and selective. And for a Secretary General to write that in a report about an important UN organ was quite a tsunami. And so we came to the creation of the Human Rights Council as an attempt to get over the problems posed by the excessive, disproportionate approach of the Commission. And let me just read one paragraph from the resolution which established the Human Rights Council. The General Assembly which established the Council decides further that the work of the Council shall be guided by the principles of universality, impartiality, objectivity and non-selectivity, constructive international dialogue and cooperation with a view to enhancing the promotion and protection of all human rights, civil, political, economic, social and cultural rights, including the right to development. Wow, that was quite something. And as a promise, it is really exciting. But what happened to that promise? Within a couple of years, within just a couple of years, the disproportionate, unfair, uneven-handed uh, approach re-emerged. Now, what we are seeing is an excessive focus on Israel. I want to make the point, it is my point, I don't know to how, how far it will resonate in this audience. It is important that we treat all states equally. It is important that we criticize all states equally on the basis of the same objective principles. There is no immunity, there is no impunity for human rights violations, whether they are in your country or in my country or in every other country, including Israel. But that's as far as it goes. Excessive, disproportionate, uneven-handed criticism of any one country to the clear detriment of oversight of other countries does corrode. And that's what's already happening with regard to the Human Rights Council. It's excessive focus on Israel to the detriment of consideration of, of far worse human rights situations has, has already brought criticism from established UN human rights establishment figures. One called resolutions on Israel singularly one-sided. 
others have talked about 